Hello guys, so welcome back to another uh, video. So in this uh, example that you see here on the screen, you have BNB and NBN transistors in the same circuit, okay? Uh, it looks complicated, although as we will see you know, in a moment, it's really you know, simple uh, to solve it. Maybe a little lengthy, but still doable. So how we can deal with such situation? You have two transistors. Each one is either active, saturation, or cut off. So basically, you have you know uh, nine possibilities. So uh, we're gonna start as usual with active, active. Okay. So we're gonna assume Q1 transistor. Usually we call transistors the Qs. Q1, uh, which is NBN, basically inactive. And Q2 as well, which is being B, both are inactive ratio. That's basically our first, you know, assumption. And you're gonna, you know, check at the end. We should we should see J2 in each the junction between the base and the filter in both transistors reverse if really this is a correct assumption. It is the correct, by the way, but you know, uh, this is how you think about it. So let's continue. Before you do anything, not to confuse yourself, start with the current direction. So in the NBN, IB is going into the base, IB1. IC is going into the collector. And remember, this is IC, not, not the one in here. Okay, so let's call this I, for example, just to differentiate it from IC. IC1 in, the, in that case. IB2 is going out of the BNB. IC2 is going out of the uh, collector of BNB, and I, IE2 is going into the emitter of the BNB. We assumed bo both are active, so VBE1 is 0.7, VB, VEB2 is also 0.7. Good. Now we have a voltage divider biasing, biasing here. As we started before. So we're gonna remove this and you know, uh, and about its Thevenin equivalent. So basically we're gonna uh, get the Thevenin equivalent for the voltage divider biasing part here, these two resistors. So let's assume this is called A and the ground is called B and we're gonna find, you know, uh, the equivalent between A and B. So let's draw it by itself. This is basically, this is basically B, this is basically A, this is RB2, this is RB1, and here is a 15 volt. You have two, uh, you know, two steps to find the equivalent, the seven equivalent. Number one, V seven. V seven is the open circuit voltage between A and B. The open circuit voltage between A and B. Basically, this voltage V A B. Okay. Since it's open circuit, so IB1 is equal to, I'm sorry, IRB1 is equal to IRB2, or RB1 and RB2 are basically series. So basically VEB, which is basically VRB, VRB2, is basically 15 times RB2 over RB2 plus RB1. It will be 15, by one third because 50 over uh, 150 will be one third. So this is basically uh, uh, five volt. 15 times one third is basically five. To get R7, you, sh you should, and you must basically, you know, cancel any voltage source or current source you have. Here we have a voltage source. To cancel the effect of a voltage source, we cancel its voltage difference because this is this is its job to make a voltage difference between the positive polarity and the negative polarity. 
to cancel its 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 uh, its job, you should cancel its voltage difference. So basically, you should you know make a short circuit like this. So it's basically zero zero voltage now. It's not fifteen volt. There is no voltage difference anymore. Okay, and you imagine you imagine there is a source like this between A and B. It's not open circuit anymore. Okay, now you look between A and B. What is the equivalent resistance? If we look in that direction here, you see that RB2 and the RB1 now are in C, are in parallel, I'm sorry. Parallel, why? Because they, are, they share both terminals, terminal A and also terminal B. Remember this now is, you know, this, this, this node is basically, is basically this node. Okay, so, uh, so our thevenin here is basically uh, RB1 parallel to RB2. So 50 parallel with 100 kilos. It will give you, if you have R and R over two, 50 and 100, then it is equivalent would be R over three. Okay, so 100 is the biggest time. So the maximum over three, the maximum is 100 here. So uh, 100 over three. Just do it, you know, R, if we have a resistor R, in battery with R over two. So the equivalent will be R, R over two, over three over two R. Okay, this will go with, uh, this will go with this. So, and the two will go with the two. So this will be R over three. So just, you know, very simple calculations. Okay, so we get the equivalent, you know, seven. Now we just remove this uh, voltage divider stuff and put the seven equivalent. So basically, you will have the same uh, circuit. It's a big circuit. And you put the seven equivalent in here. This is A, this is B, this is R7, and this is V7. Okay. Uh, here you have RC1. So of course, known RE2. It's known, this is Q2 basically. And I'm sorry, Q2 is B in B, not in B in. So I should remove this. This is RC2, uh, RE1, RC1, R7, and that's it. And this is basically Q1. And both transistors have a beta of 100. So beta of 100 here, this is basically given. That's why I didn't write it. Now let's, you know, see how we can solve this circuit in here. Okay, it's still uh, simple. So this is basically IC1, IB1, and here is IE1. It's called this I, uh, this is IE2, IB2, and IC2. Okay, good. So from that, you know, that loop in here, so from KVL in loop one, you have basically uh, V7, which is five volt, it's known, equal to IB, R7, R7 is no, IB is not known, IB1 here, plus the point seven, remember this is in active region as we assume, so point seven here, plus IE1, RE1. Remember IE1 is basically beta plus one IB. So beta plus one IB1, RE1. You have here one unknown, which is basically IB. So from that we can calculate IB1, it is uh, basically uh, 1.27, eight milliampers. Okay, one of the unknowns you know, has been solved now. Can we? We know, uh, we know basically beta, so we can, you know, calculate uh, IC and IE. So IC1 will be beta IB1. So this is basically uh, 127. I'm sorry, IB1 is, uh, is you know, small, smaller than this. So it's basically, uh, 0.0.1278. Okay, so basically, uh, beta IC1 is 1.278 uh, 
milli amperes. Approximately equal to IE1. Because beta is 100, again, alpha will be around 0.99, so you can just ignore it and consider it as one. Okay, that's basically IB1, IC1, and IE1. Now about, how about now IB2, IE2, and IC2? So we can have, you know, some calculations in here. So at that node in here, so you have I, so this is basically KVL. Now KCL, I is equal to, or I plus IB2 uh, equal to IC1. This is an equation, it has two unknowns, remember? So IC1 is known, but IB2 and the I are not known. So you have two unknowns here in one equation. But you have this loop in here. Okay, remember this is 15 volt, okay? And this is here 0.7, VEB. So let's do that. So you have uh, the voltage is, is like this, and the voltage is, so I from KVL at loop two, you have I RC1 equal to 0.7 plus, which is VEB plus IE2, RE2. RE2 is known, uh, RC1 is known, so uh, you have I and IE2 are known. But remember, IE2 is basically beta plus one IB2. So we can rewrite this equation as I uh, RC1 equal to 0.7 plus beta plus one IB2 RE2. Look, you can consider this equation as one, you can consider this equation as two. It's also a, a function of two unknowns IB2 again and I again. So by solving equations one and two, you can get I and IB2. Basically, I will be uh, 1.2505 milliamperes, and the IB2 will be uh, 0.0. Two seven uh, four or five uh, milliamperes. Once you get IB two, you can get IC two and IE two. So IC two approximately equal to IE two, uh, equal to beta IB two. So basically two point uh, seven five milliamperes. Okay, that's basically you know uh, the, all the counts. Now the moment of truth. We should check, but we now check two transistors, not just one, because you have two transistors. So you must check that or verify that really Q1 or transistor one, the NBM is in active region. And you must verify as well at the same time that, NB, uh, that the VNB or Q2 has, is also working in the active region. If one of them violates this, then you redo the assumption, you assume something else. Okay, so let's do that. So. So to verify, we should calculate v, uh, VC1 and VB1, VC2 and VB2. So uh, let's try uh, VB1 first. So basically, this is base one here. So VB1, you can do it in multiple ways. You can say it's V7 plus uh, I uh, minus, not minus, minus. Minus uh, IB1 or seven, or you can say it's 0.7 plus IE1 RE1. You can do both ways, of course. Okay, and from that VB1 will be 4.53. This is VB1. Now VC1. This one is really easy. So you have here this point is 15. And the voltage here is I RC1, and you know I and RC1 is given. So basically, VC1 is basically 15 minus I RC1, I RC1. So this will give you uh, 8.74. This is any any transistor. So VCB or VBC, I'm sorry. 
which is the voltage difference between the base, which is B type, and the collector, which is N type, should be less than 0.4. So VBC, or VBC1 here, 4.53 minus 8.74, which is good, because now the B, the B uh, type is, has less voltage than the N type, so it's reverse. This, give, this will give us minus, minus 4.2 volt. So J2 of uh, the NBN transistor Q1 is reverse. So you want to check. We are not done yet. This is for Q1 verification. Now Q2 verification. VB2, what is VB2? VB2 is the voltage of that point. It's basically same as VC1. So this is VC1 and this is VB2. They are both, you know, the same, same node. So VB2 is basically VC1 equal to 8.74. How about, uh, you know, C2? This is C2 here. So you can say this is, this is the ground and this is IC2, so, so the voltage is like this. So it's basically minus IC2 RC2. VC2 is equal to minus IC2 RC2. So uh, VC2, uh, let's do it again, let's check. So IC2 is going into, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. So basically this is some, some mistake. So again, this is what I'm saying. It's, it's really tricky, you know? So uh, I assume here's the wrong, Although we didn't use it in the, in, the, in the solution, so it doesn't affect our solution. So this is basically wrong. So IC2 should be going out of the, you know, the collector. That's good. Uh, yeah, it's really good to, to have this mistake so you can, guys, you know, uh, think about it because it's really, you know, uh, confusing many times. So based on that, it's different. So the voltage now is different. So I is going from up to bottom. So the voltage will be opposite from bottom to up. So VC2 is basically now IC2 RC2, not minus. IC2 RC2, okay. So it's gonna be uh, 7.42, okay. And it's now the moment of two. So VCB now, because the collector is B type, the base is in the type. So VCB is VC, VCB2, VC2 minus VB2, VC2 is 7.42, minus 8.74, the B type has a voltage less than the N type, so basically this is, this is reverse bias, it's off, it's basically minus, around minus 0.7, so G2 for the BNB transistor, which is Q2, is also reverse bias. So both are reverse. So basically our, you know, our assumption is correct. Okay, guys, you know, it's a little bit lengthy because you have two transistors, you have a bigger circuit, okay? And they are of course dependent on each other, but it's doable. It's not, it's not, it's not complicated. It's not, it's not hard basically. Okay, maybe, you know, the, the, <laughs> the, the examples that we took, you know, last lecture in which you have this voltage divider was, was you know, a little bit harder than this, okay? But it's really doable. Okay, you know, you know, you should just take care of the directions. Assume the, you know, uh, the good directions. If you assume bad directions for the voltage and the current, you will be doomed. Okay, thank you very much, guys, for watching this video, and see you in the next video. Bye bye.